wir kommen nun zu unserer ersten transatlantischen Schaltung, die wir im Rahmen dieses Kongresses vornehmen werden. Wir gehen nach Mountain View, Kalifornien, also direkt ins Silicon Valley. Natürlich hätten wir uns gewünscht, dass wir unseren nächsten Speaker direkt hier auf der Bühne hätten begrüßen können. Covid-19 macht es leider nicht möglich. Bei unserem ersten Kongress, der für April geplant war, da wäre er rübergekommen. Aktuell geht es einfach nicht. Wir reden von John Waymo. Sorry, ich habe mich ganz kurz versprochen. Ich meine natürlich John Kraftschick, der CEO von Waymo, eines der wichtigsten Treiber in Sachen autonomes Fahren. Äh, Ola Kelenius hat es heute Morgen schon angesprochen. Und ich freue mich jetzt auf den Talk, den wir im Vorfeld dieses Kongresses aufgezeichnet haben. Welcome, John. It's great to be with you. I'm speaking to you from Waymo's headquarters, and we're giving you an opportunity to see inside our top secret garage where our technicians and engineers work on the Waymo driver. What you're looking at behind me is the fifth generation Waymo driver. Um, it's an all new hardware set uh, to go with our latest software releases, which we think will be an even more capable driver um, than the fourth generation Waymo driver that people now associate with Waymo that's driving around our Chrysler Pacifica hybrid vehicles. So um, we've launched this new um, driver. Um, I was on my way actually to the Geneva Auto Show in March uh, when COVID hit. And, and there we were meant to share with the world the news of our newest business line, Waymo Via, uh, which is meant to move goods from point A to point B driven by the Waymo driver. Um, we've continued to expand um, our work on the goods transportation side and now have really strong work streams with um, class eight trucks. You may have seen some of our Peterbilt uh, trucks on the road. And I think of, of interest to many of the folks watching, we uh, recently signed an agreement with Daimler trucks um, and now have a broad global collaboration that's starting with their outstanding Freightliner Cascadia truck, where we'll be inter integrating our fifth generation Waymo driver uh, to that wonderful platform to help move goods uh, around the world from city to city. We've also got an urban delivery version of, of Waymo Via so that we can handle uh, deliveries in cities and suburban areas, um, not just highway um, point to point. We've been so hard at work regarding Waymo One and, and our ride hailing progress. And it's been challenging, as you might imagine, because of the pandemic. Out of an abundance of caution, um, we paused our operations in Phoenix for our riders um, in March um, because we thought that was the best thing to do. Um, eventually, we brought those operations back up. And I'm, I'm really proud to say that um, since late September, um, where we've brought passengers back into our cars, we've been driving them around in 100% fully autonomous mode. Uh, so no Waymo employees or anyone in the driver's seat, uh, the car being completely controlled uh, by our fully autonomous Waymo driver. Um, that's a pretty cool thing. We've had um, massive um, goodwill and success and, and lots of great feedback from, um, from those riders who are now able to share their experiences on, uh, on social media. It's been fun for us to see that because earlier, While we had been giving those rides, um, those early riders were under NDA or non-disclosure agreements. And now um, general members of the public can access the service and, and share those experiences and even share the rides with friends and family. It's been, it's been wonderful to see. Um, the final thing um, that we did to sort of punctuate that was to share with the world our, our safety narrative, our, our safety story. Um, we wanted to demonstrate a lot of transparency for the world. So um, we went out with um, two uh, white papers that read very much like scientific papers. The first one explaining our framework for safety and how we think about it. Um, the second one sharing performance metrics um, for our cars. And what we did here, I'm, I'm really, really proud of. It, it's something completely different um, in the fully autonomous space. Um, you see, usually when companies try to demonstrate how good their technology is, they do this by sharing 
good moments, like a good film, a good demo, a good recording, some good statistics. We took the exact opposite approach um, at Waymo. We took all of our driving in Phoenix from January 1st, 2019 to September 30th of this year, 2020. Uh, turns out we drove 10 million kilometers um, during that year and nine months. And what we decided to do, instead of sharing a highlight reel, was share a low light reel. Um, what were all of the issues, every single issue that we had, um, any time of contact at all. We shared all of our worst moments um, with the idea that if we could share those worst moments and demonstrate that hmm, it really wasn't that bad, that maybe we could bring the world uh, along with us uh, to share this journey with a little bit more confidence. And uh, what we shared um, about those 10 million kilometers of driving was that we had a grand total of 47 um, contacts with other objects in the world. Um, many of those, um, the great majority of those, in fact, 29 were simulated because a lot of this driving was done with Waymo trained drivers um, in the driver's seat. And in those cases where the driver maybe had to, to take over, we took that into our computer simulation tool to understand what would the Waymo driver um, have done. Um, and it's from that vast sharing of data um, that we had our own confidence to launch. And we hope now the world has the same level of confidence um, to launch. It's pretty extraordinary what we found uh, with that data set. Waymo has had a big year. Part of that was announcing your first external fundraise. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? We had always had a plan, as you know. Um, we're part of Alphabet and we're, we're a semi-autonomous uh, unit um, within Alphabet. Um, but we've always had this plan to continue um, this process toward potential uh, separation um, from Alphabet. And one of the first steps on that path um, was to take on external investment. So um, we began thinking about this um, last year um, and uh, began this fundraising process, which completed in the first half of this year. Um, we announced uh, back in March uh, the first $2 billion or so of funding. We ended up closing out our, our first round with $3.25 billion of funding from a, a wide swath of, of wonderful investing partners. Many of them have become, in effect, business partners for us. Um, we get to learn from their business acumen in other spaces. Um, very, very smart financial investors like Silver Lake and Canada Pension Plan, um, but also strategic investors, folks like Auto Nation, a retail group here in the US who help us with our maintenance and fleet operations. Um, also Magna, a tier one supplier who's helping us assemble uh, the Waymo driver in a plant that we operate together in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, I'd have to say it was, uh, it was a very satisfying part of 2020, um, closing that round um, as we did. How has COVID impacted Waymo's operations over the last several months? COVID has definitely been um, a factor for us to deal with. I mean, it's, uh, it's impacted our um, operations, of course, as I mentioned, we paused our driving um, in March uh, in our Waymo One service. Um, and it also slowed down our ability to um, accumulate early test miles on the fifth generation Waymo driver um, that you see over our shoulder. So there's no question um, it had an impact of, of at least uh, a couple of months. Um, but we've done all of those things, all of these precautions, um, in the interest of ensuring that our riders were safe and that our employees and all of our extended team members uh, were very, very safe. But it definitely had an impact. It did cause us though to, to reflect on how we can do even more work um, in simulation. Um, we're well past now, uh, well over 20 billion kilometers um, in simulation. In fact, I think even over 25 billion kilometers in simulation these days. Um, and so we're really learning a lot and advancing the Waymo driver primarily through um, our simulated world. Um, but we augment that with very, very necessary road miles, real public road miles. And um, no question the, the COVID pandemic has slowed down our ability uh, to generate those public road miles. Um, but we're feeling good about our, uh, our situation right now. We figured out a way, as most of the world has, uh, to work through while also having lots of respect for the virus. 
Increasingly, we hear some automakers referring to their vehicle as self-driving, even though they require a human driver. What's Waymo's perspective on that? I think in this space, um, precision in language is just as important as precision in engineering, um, perhaps more so, right? And, um, you know, from our perspective, it's actually fairly simple. Who's driving the car? Who's responsible for driving the car? If a human driver is responsible for driving the car and has the legal liability associated with it, then it's not a self-driving system. It's not an autonomous system. It is a driver assist system. And that's okay, you know, and, and we need driver assist systems. And we're very, very happy at Waymo to see um, very, very good driver assist systems being deployed around the world. If handled well, they can improve roadway safety, uh, which is our primary mission. Our approach at Waymo, though, is completely different from those trying to uh, bring driver assist systems to the world. Um, our approach is to bring a driver to the world, a replacement, a complete replacement uh, for the human driver. That is our product. Our product is not um, a self-driving car. Um, our product is a driver, a fully formed, fully autonomous driver. Um, that in time, we hope will have the ability to drive all sorts of cars and trucks in all sorts of environments around the world. So really, really important point. Um, we are a fully autonomous driving solution. Uh, we are not driver assist technologies. And I think it's going to be a really, really good thing, good thing for the world if we all agree on how to standardize the words that we use to talk about these technologies. We don't really feel like we are a competitor um, in any way uh, to car companies. Um, rather, we're, we're building a different product. We're building a driver. We're, we're only building um, a driver. Um, it's sort of like there are lots of analogies that one can think of. Um, the aerospace industry is, um, is a good one, uh, I think, where there are companies that build the airframes, uh, the airplanes themselves. And there are a different set of companies that build the, the engines, um, the jet engines in particular, uh, for those airframe makers. Um, we should all standardize or, or specialize um, at, on the things that, that we're very, very good at. And Waymo has built um, this capability um, through our strength and software um, and new hardware uh, modalities and sensing modalities like LiDAR and other things um, that are really, really well suited um, to recreate a human driver, um, I think that's what we bring to the world. And that's our sole focus, um, to be a driver. Again, our product is a driver. Our product isn't a self-driving car or a self-driving truck. Um, but we do um, enjoy partnership uh, with very many car companies around the world. Um, and in many cases, they're quite comfortable with us um, taking this role as adding the driver functionality to their cars or to their trucks. We see that. See that um, is our place in the mobility ecosystem. What is your strategy when it comes to OEM partnerships? I think all OEMs now understand our role um, and I, I think are much more comfortable um, with that role, that our focus is the driver. I think if you go back five or six or seven years um, when OEMs were looking at the very embryonic version of Waymo that existed back then, um, you know, the the, one of the very first demonstration projects for um, that self-driving car project um, was a self-driving car. Um, the little firefly, we called it internally, uh, which many people have come to associate with um, the Google self-driving car project. Um, that was really just sort of like a, a pilot. It was like an avatar um, for the space showing what could be. Uh, but I think automakers, and I was at an automaker at the time, looked at that and said, what the heck? Google wants to be a car company? This doesn't make sense. Um, since that time, we've made it very, very clear to the world, or at least we've tried to do so, um, that our product, again, isn't a self-driving car, but rather is very specifically um, the hardware and software that is the driver that replaces the human driver um, in the same sorts of cars and trucks that are driven on roads today. Car manufacturers are just realizing that the development of highly automated cars is more complicated than they thought. Do you share this impression? I think because we've been in this space now, going on 12 years, we, we have a great insight into the challenge of, of doing this. And 
Um, you know, we were talking about driver assist and how I think it's very important to separate um, the, the requirements and the capabilities of a driver assist system from a, a fully autonomous driver solution, which is Waymo's approach. Um, we believe strongly at Waymo that, that there's a massive discontinuity uh, between driver assist and a, a, a full human driver replacement. Um, it's not a linear progression in technology. It's not like you get better and better and better at a driver assist system, and then suddenly you've got a fully autonomous driver. Our own experience, is because we tried to do it that way, um, was that that doesn't work, that this is just a, it's a fundamentally different approach uh, and, and a fundamentally different solution set that's required uh, to bring a replacement for a human driver into a car or a truck and have that entity safely move that vehicle platform from point A to point B. John, do you actually like to drive yourself? And if so, what kind of car? I have a soft spot in my heart for um, German engineering. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've got, I've got three uh, Porsche 911s, which I know sounds very, very silly. Um, They are uh, a, a wide range of, of this wonderful model. I love it so much. I've got a 1993 uh, Porsche 911 Targa. I've got a 2006 911 um, C2S. Uh, that's the 997 generation. And um, I've also got a, a, a 2018 911 GT3 with the touring package. Uh, it's a beautiful car, my, my favorite car. Um, I will probably hold on to these things forever for the rest of my life. I cherish them so much. Um, it's just one of the reasons I'm grateful for um, the prowess of German engineering. I see it uh, and feel it every day I drive those cars. And um, I hope that brings um, a sense of, I don't know, safety and comfort for industry in general. I think the personally owned car will continue forevermore. Um, and really what we're doing Uh, with the Waymo driver, if you think about it from a, a really big picture standpoint, um, is creating a replacement for those times when we humans don't really want to drive ourselves from point A to point B. We're going to have this new fully autonomous driver um, that can take care of those times, like, for example, our morning and evening commutes when we're all back at work. Um, and I think that's going to unlock a lot of productivity, um, a lot of efficiency, and allow us, who knows, um, to have um, even more fun, personally owned cars um, in our garages and driveways in the future. Okay, if all your Porsche and your garage are the future of the mobility, we all might have a lot of fun. Thank you so much, John. Bye-bye.